So, hi everyone. Welcome to the last ethereum.org community call in 2022. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being with us throughout the year. It's definitely been eventful and we want to spend today's call looking back on some of the key things that we've done, new pages that we've shipped and the community led initiatives that have had a significant impact on the site. As always, this is a community call for the ethereum.org website, not for the Ethereum Foundation or the Ethereum protocol. With that out of the way, let's take a look at what we'll be chatting about today. So first of all, Paul is going to start us off by talking about the run a node and staking pages that we've added to the website this year. Next up, Joseph is going to talk about the energy consumption page and our work in preparation for the merge. Very on topic with the major events of this year. Next up, Corwin is going to walk us through the new layer two page, the scaling pages that we've updated in the developer docs and the find wallet revamp. Joshua is going to talk about the learning quizzes and the Learn Hub revamp, as well as highlighting some of the pages that some awesome community members have contributed to the website. Nuno will give an update on the design system. Pablo will cover the code base migration to TypeScript and Chakra. I will give an overview of the translation program this year and what's been going on. Nico is going to talk about our work on some of the other EF websites like the EF blog, ESP, cryptography, and Geth sites. And finally, Sam is going to give us a sneak peek into what we'll be working on next year. At the end, as always, some miscellaneous announcements and callouts. And that should be it. So given that we have a bunch to cover, I'd say let's get started and hand it off to Paul. Take us away, Paul. Sounds good. GM, folks. I'm um, sorry, I'm going to call this job. Hopefully the background noise is too bad. Um, so, yeah, thinking back, it's been a long year. The run a note page, I had to look back myself and realize was launched back in January. Uh, that was an exciting update, in my opinion, to the page, trying to encourage everyone uh, to learn more about what's involved in running a note, why it's important, why, why our network depends on it. Um, so obviously you can get to that at ethereum.org slash run dash a dash note. Uh, there's some tips on there for folks who haven't checked it out to try to learn more about why this is all important and how you potentially get involved and get started for your own note and participate. Um, it's not necessarily as hard as a lot of people think it is. So if you haven't checked it out, I'd encourage folks to take a look at this. Uh, the other set of pages that we worked on, this is we were launched this was back in the April timeframe earlier in the year, the staking revamp. We took a look at the staking pages that were there, which were pretty simple uh, at first, and we tried to expand on those and offer more information about different tools that were available, different staking as a service providers, different pooled staking options to help kind of inform the community of all the different aspects of staking that are involved. Because certain parts of it can sound pretty intimidating, while others are much simpler, easier for, for new folks to, to get on board and, and, uh, and learn more about it and get involved. So if you haven't checked that out as well, definitely encourage same same thing, ethereum.org slash staking. That's going to be the main pages. And there you can take a look at all the different ways you can get involved with staking and learn more, learn more about the risks, learn more about the benefits and why it's important. Um, and yeah, given we have a lot of folks up today, I'm going to leave it at that. Pass it back to Luca. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Paul. Was just chatting with people in the chat um next up joseph is gonna talk about the energy consumption page and some of the work that we did in preparation for and after the ethereum merge joseph. yeah thanks luca uh well yeah the merge it was such a fundamental change to ethereum that it really touched a large amount of our content in some way or another um it was also a very hyped event that the community needed to be ready for. 
um, which required one type of content. But then also the moment that the merge happened, we had to switch to talking about it in the past tense and start talking about the low carbon, high security proof of stake model being the current protocol design rather than a, a, an upcoming upgrade. So our approach was to update the site in advance of the merge so that all the content was appropriate for helping people prepare all about what to expect and how to act and what to do and what not to do. And uh, to, you know, to explain the merge as an upcoming event that's still in Ethereum's future. But then we also wanted to be able to update the site on merge day so that as soon as we saw a successful transition, we could pretty much in one click update all of our content for um, for the post-merge world. And that means discussing it in the past tense, showcasing the, the, the scale of the improvements that it enabled, celebrating with uh, with Easter eggs on the site, like the Merge Panda on the uh, on the Ethereum Commons background and etc. So to do this we we maintained a, a separate copy of the of the website developed in the months leaving, leading up to the merge. Um, so that it was just ready to make live as soon as the moment arrived. And we also went through the site, seeking out all of the gaps in our merge and, and proof of stake content so that we were as well positioned as possible for, for helping the community understand how Ethereum works in, in proof of stake mode. That meant writing some new pages on some of the more technical aspects of the protocol. Um, specifically, we added pages on the, the, the architecture of, a, of an Ethereum node after proof of stake, uh, how blocks are proposed in proof of stake, proof of stake attack and defense. And um, we added a FAQs page and a page about proof of stake versus proof of work. And um, coming on to the energy consumption page. Now, one of the most significant things that the merge brought to Ethereum was, was a dramatic, really dramatic drop in the amount of energy that it consumes. Um, the energy consumption dropped by 99.98%. We used to require a country's worth of energy, and now the energy expenditure is negligible. And we also got more security and, and regular block times as well at the same time. So it was, it was just such a pleasure to write up the energy consumption page. Um, it's just really satisfying to change all the syntax from Ethereum will move to proof of stake and reduce its energy expenditure to no, actually Ethereum did move to proof of stake and obliterate its energy consumption. And that page got shared a lot. The, um, the bar chart on the page with the values that I collated got shared a lot all over Twitter and various reports. Um, you know, I saw it a lot in September, October time. And uh, just after the merge, a bunch of third party reports started to be published as well that confirmed what, what, what we'd said, what we already knew about the drop off in energy consumption. So it was just brilliant to be able to add those citations and back up the claims with um, you know, increasingly robust sources over time. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, on the bleak days in crypto, that page in particular is, is a real pick me up. So um, that's all I got to say. Back to you, Luca. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Joseph. Yeah, the merge was definitely the highlight of this year for Ethereum in general. And as it makes sense, it was also a bunch of work for um, to get Ethereum.org live and ready for all of that. So thanks to everyone who was involved in getting that ready. Um, next up, we're going to have Corwin, who's going to chat about a couple of different things, mostly around the scaling section and the layer two page that we shipped this year and the fine wallet revamp. Take us away, Corwin. Thanks, everyone. Um, so coming into 2022, uh, we saw that layer two solutions were coming online and we need to get some information on the website. There's also a meme coming into this year of L222. I'm not sure if it's still alive, but it's definitely strong at the start of the year. Um, that being said, when uh, we started the year, we were looking at building out a layer two page for um, kind of newer people coming into Ethereum to learn about it. Just a more approachable page um, that we put into the use Ethereum section of the website. You can also find it on ethereum.org slash layer two. Um, this page is very like approachable for someone looking to learn um, 
like early in their journey, learning about Ethereum and looking to learn about scaling solutions on Ethereum. And so it basically takes you from uh, the start of like, what is a layer one? Why do we need layer two? Um, what are the benefits of this? How do layer twos work? Um, going into the different kinds of rollups a little bit. Um, how to use them and onboard onto the layer two products and kind of the difference between uh, layer two and a Validium slash sidechain and some handy tools to use layer twos. In addition to this page, uh, we had a community member, Emmanuel, who did a lot of work to revamp our developer docs content on scaling solutions. So started off with updating just our general scaling page and then moving on into this different subsections of scaling, being optimistic rollups, uh, so this page also got updated, talking about um, the differences between optimistic rollups, zero knowledge rollups, how they differ from sidechain, plasma chain, and validiums. As well, similar to these comparisons to the different kinds of scaling solutions, you'll also see that content and how they compare with the zero knowledge rollups page, the sidechains page, plasma chains, and validiums. And this was all spearheaded by Emmanuel, a community member. Um, so thank you to Emmanuel for uh, helping update all this content around scaling for us. Last thing we wanted to highlight that we, or yeah, that we were working on this year uh, was updating our find wallets page. So initially I went to the Wayback Machine here to look at what our page looked like before. Um, we had some filters, but when you use them, it would, it was all at the top of the page. It was a little bit like confusing of the user experience. Um, since this is way back, we're not going to see any wallet data, but uh, the flow was kind of awkward for users. So we revamped our find wallets page to make it much more streamlined and a better user experience for users to find a wallet. And how we did that was looking at, okay, what are some of the main user profiles that um, people would have coming into this ecosystem? So you might be brand new, um, just looking for a wallet to hold some funds, or you may be really into NFTs or you're holding your crypto for the long term. So I was trying to find a wallet that fit what a user may be looking for and having easy options as well to just come into all the features that we keep track of and let you toggle those to find like a wallet that fits your criteria. Um, and this was done a lot by our team and uh, the community is at large by submitting wallets for us to have on this website as well. Um, yeah, with that, I will pass it back to you, Luca. Thank you, Corwin. Moving on, we've got Joshua to tell us a bit about the learning quizzes um, and the Learn Hub revamp and some of the community led initiatives and pages that we've shipped this year. Over to you, Josh. Yeah, thanks, Luca. Um, yeah, learning stuff. So I'll start with the Learn Hub. Um, a big part of 2022 was making Ethereum.org more accessible to everyone. Um, and we found that one of the best ways to do that was by creating simpler, more curated learning experiences. So what that means like, is instead of complicated technical developer docs, we wanted to grow our content with more easy to understand Ethereum explanations about like the fundamentals and basic concepts. Um, so to that end, we created firstly this learning hub that you see on my screen just now. The goal was to explain about the essentials of Ethereum in straightforward language while still communicating the, the finer details that Ethereum has to offer that is sometimes quite complex. Uh, so this page in particular, it starts off as if you have absolutely zero knowledge about anything crypto related. And it walks you through the very basics of Ethereum, of Ether, of buying ETH. Moving through to different building blocks around like smart contracts, Web3, wallet security, and also into quite a few of the many use cases that Ethereum has built on top of it. Now, I won't go through and speak to everything that's on this page, but if you haven't checked it out, I'd highly recommend it. To anyone that's familiar with a lot of these concepts, it seems pretty obvious, 
but the positive response that we've had from our user research um, has made it quite clear that these types of curated learning experiences were highly useful to almost all users, but especially beginners. By pretty much every metric, the Learn Hub is one of the most satisfactory pages on the website, according to users. So you can see that we've got from everyone who's replied, it's got a score of 4.78 out of 5. It's very easy to understand, 4.71 out of 5. And people think the overall layout and design of the page is 4.66 out of 5. Um, and that really was quite eye-opening for us about the type of content that we want to prioritize moving forward. So all that being said, if you know someone who's at the beginning of their Ethereum journey, then consider sending them here to get started. And yeah, thanks, Sam, for sharing that in the chat. Building on top of those ideas and the learnings from the Learn Hub, we decided also to create these learning quizzes. Uh, so the problem we were trying to solve was no matter how interested you are in Ethereum, reading documentation can be pretty dry. It can get quite boring. Um, yeah, so the learning quizzes were our first effort into trying to make our content a bit more fun, a bit more engaging. The idea here is pretty simple. Um, people like to play games and people like to do well at the games that they play. So we thought that if we could gamify our content in a way that force people to comprehend this wall of text that you can see a little bit more fully, um, then it would make them a more impactful user of Ethereum and allow them to do more stuff. So the quizzes themselves, um, they're very basic questions based on the content that lives on the page. So I believe we've got quizzes currently on eight different pages on the website. And every question is about the content that came prior to it on the page. The quizzes will tell you if you get something right. So if we say that Ethereum transactions aren't reversible, it will say, OK, good job. And it will explain to you why that is. But also probably more importantly, it will tell you why, if you get something wrong, like why it's wrong. The idea here being that it can correct misunderstandings or broken mental models. And yeah, lastly, you can also share your results on Twitter to let everyone know how smart you are. Or if you're Skylar, maybe how smart that you are. In so far, I believe there's over 50,000 quiz questions that have been answered so far. Uh, the reception to them has been overwhelmingly very positive. So next year, we'll be expanding out the amount of questions that we have on the website, uh, as well as adding more functionality to this feature. So if you'd like to try those out, um, I'm sure someone will be kind enough to throw it in the chat for me. Last thing I want to chat through before I pass you back over to Luca is just to take a minute to thank all of our amazing content contributors. Ethereum.org is successful thanks to literally thousands of contributors, and we value each and every person who is helping to build out this fantastic resource. There are a few pages that I really like from 2022 that I would like to call out specifically. Um, but we don't have time to go through everything. So just as a caveat to this, that there's a lot more to this. And if I haven't mentioned something here, it doesn't mean that it wasn't massively appreciated. First one was the blockchain bridges that we collaborated with Arjun on very early on in the year. Um, this was just as L2 2022, as Corwin mentioned, was just starting to kick off. And everyone was a little bit confused at that point about how do I take my ETH and get it from mainnet onto something else. Uh, so pages like this and a couple of other supplementary pages were quite pivotal to helping people understand that. We also have a, a DSI page, Decentralized Science, thanks to Vincent. Um, yeah, this isn't something that I'd heard of until maybe 
close to halfway through the year and there was a lot of hype and a lot of interest around it. Um, it seems to solve a lot of problems that there are in the, the scientific community at the moment. So we really appreciated Vincent coming forward and building out this awesome resource for us. It definitely helped me and a lot of people on the team to understand this a little bit better. But again, we've got overwhelming um, positive feedback from the community that this is a worthwhile resource. Uh, and for the last two pages, we've got decentralized social networks. Um, I'm sure everyone who's been on Twitter knows that it's potentially imploding at the moment and a lot of people are looking for alternatives. So having a page like this has been great just to point people to what is a decentralized social network and what does it do and what are some options. Um, and this was included, as well as the decentralized identity page, this was written by Emmanuel, who Corwin mentioned earlier on and has been one of our most prolific contributors in terms of content. Yeah, so we really appreciate that. Yeah, and lastly, just the decentralized identity and um, explaining what identity is and how you can use various things on Ethereum to build up your decentralized identity or perhaps many different identities using things like attestations and explaining some of the more difficult uh, technical concepts around this and how those work. So yeah, thanks again to everyone. Um, lastly, I would like to call out if you like writing and you would like to get involved with building out Ethereum.org's content resources, then we have some very big ideas for scaling up this effort in 2023. So we'd love to hear from you. Please do get in touch and you can ping us directly or we do have our content channel in Discord as well. Um, so yeah, so that's all I've got. I'll pass it back over to Luca. Nice. Thanks, Josh. Next up, we have Nuno to give us an update on the open design system. Hello, everyone. So uh, you all know that we have been working on the design system for the past few months. Uh, we are at the point that uh, we will start coding some of the some of the parts you already have laid out on the design system for the next quarter. So that's super excited to have something real some ca catching up in the browser. For this update, I was focused more on the on the December update, which uh, was all more focus on the markdown pages and, and um, we've been tweaking a lot of details on those and uh, we agreed to um, uh, to use Storybook uh, on our tech stack to bridge the design into the components on code. Thank you, Tyler, for the help and pushing forward this um, this idea of uh, incorporating Storybook in our tech stack. Uh, we're looking for that will help bridge the design and the coding and everything will work smoothly. So uh, some of the highlights that I wanted just to point out, it's like small examples that design system will help. Mm -hmm. Like we came up with the idea of expanding a little bit the hero. This will be something that we'll be working on on code for the next quarter, something new that will open up a little bit the design on the on the on the big screens um it's just an example of how important we this work has been to update the design step by step without disrupting the mm -hmm. normal flow of new content of the, of the website some of the components that we have been working on for the markdown pages as i as i mentioned so small details uh, and crafting the small um small design details using chakra as a base uh, as you all know we have been migrating to chakra pablo will talk a little bit more about that uh, and just to finish a quick example that this is a normal uh, page that we have now and we will transition to something close to this which is a lot more cleaner a lot more open really easy to read uh, but more enjoyable to 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 go about and we will update all those small D things. This is uh, just one small example of the design system and how it will be applied to the pages and the work we have been done. Uh, for this month, uh, we um, we closed this page, all the small details, uh, for, and we are really looking forward to see this on the browser. Um, 
And this was my update for the design system. Thank you so much, Luca. Thanks, Nuno. Yeah, exciting. Um, shout out to Nuno and Jakob, our two designers, who have really been thinking a lot about how to make contributing as a designer easier and getting more designers involved with Ethereum. And just to drive that point home, right now we have 36 people with the design role on the server. So people who are interested in contributing as a designer versus a year ago when it was literally zero. So amazing growth. Um, next up, we're going to have Pablo cover the code based migration to TypeScript and Chakra. Yeah. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, so, yeah, on the technical side of the website. Um, so in the course of this year, uh, we did two big migrations that were driven by community, essentially, um, with the main goal of making our code base more robust. And that, that will help us. Um, sorry, can you hear me? You're sharing this course screen, OK, perfect. We can hear you, yeah, though. Yeah, sorry. Let me <laughs> change windows. Screens. Entire screen. No? No? You, you yeah. still see my display? Yeah. Yeah, we no. yeah, this is good. Yeah, you're going okay. to get one. Thank you. Sorry my <laughs> for my new skills on Discord. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, we want we want to to make our code more robust and uh, basically to to scale better in the future and then adding new features on top of that. So um, the the first uh, TypeScript the first um, migration that we did was adding TypeScript to the code. Um, so as you may see on on our repo. Uh, we are we have a pretty big repo. We have over uh, twenty thousand commits, and we have a bunch of a lot of contributors adding code constantly, day by day, uh, on the repo on the project. And this is really hard to to keep the code organized and well structured. So that was basically the main reason why we decided to implement TypeScript on the code. Um, we did this uh, with the help of you guys, with the community. You can see here almost uh, 10 partic participants, 10 contributors help us uh, in the process. Uh, I think we did a pretty good job on this. We basically migrated 150 files to TypeScript. Um, and yeah, this is, of course, not the. Uh, this is clearly a, a an an ever living epic or effort. Uh, this was just the first iteration where we just uh, migrate all the files. But in the future, we we expect to to keep improving the TypeScript. I'm sure that there are tons of things to improve and to fix uh, that are related to TypeScript. Um, so the next big migration that we did on the code base was uh, related with UI. Uh, you can see the, the implement this epic, the implementation of the UI library. Uh, so a year ago, on December 2021, we were trying to improve the accessibility of of the website, and in that moment, uh, we were also thinking about creating this design system that Nuno just talked about. And um, we, we realized soon that we were reinventing the wheel in a lot of custom components that we have. Uh, so in that moment, we decided to, to implement a UI library uh, that set the, the foundations of, of our UI components, where we can build on top of, of them. Uh, 
these components are more robust, have uh, follow the modern standards of web, uh, are well tested. Uh, so we started analyzing and exploring different libraries, different options, uh, and we decided to go with Chakra UI. That is a, an open source library uh, that has a, a pretty big community around uh, a super good documentation. And the API for, for the, this UI components is pretty easy to use. Um, so we started uh, implementing the UI library uh, with you guys. This was a great success. This is a great success because we are still working on this. Um, we have around 30 contributors uh, migrating all the UI components that we have. Uh, recently, we started the second wave of migration. So we divided all the components that we have in two. Um, you can see the second part here. Uh, that is in progress. We are super close to finish. We have a lot of PRs open that needs review, but soon it's going to, to be merged. Um, another thing to, to highlight on this is uh, that in the, in the process of this migration, you, the, com the community, have not only added a uh, incredible value on this migration itself, but also you have proposed uh, some great ideas uh, that are kind of related with this. For example, the, the storybook uh, proposal done by Tyler that Nuno just, just said as well. Uh, that is a great example uh, of, of people giving us great ideas to, to improve our code. Uh, so I, I would invite uh, Everyone who has ideas or improvements or something that we haven't considered yet uh, on the code to create a PR, uh, an issue, sorry, uh, and propose those changes. We are all, always open to, to hear that and, and discuss them. Um, so as I said, we are close to finish it. I think early Q1, we are going to, to finish migrating all the all the components and and this will serve as the foundations for the upcoming goals for 2023 where we are going to basically try to implement the design system from from the designers that that they are creating from nuno and jacob uh, and improve the accessibility uh, that's the, those are the goals um, so yeah that's that's all i have to say uh, thanks everyone again who has uh, collaborated and participated uh, in in these efforts? And yeah, have a happy holiday. Awesome! Thanks, Pablo. Yeah, and thanks to all of the contributors who have been involved with all of these initiatives. A couple of pretty pretty massive migrations, and it's always exciting to see so many people getting involved. All right, next up, I'm going to briefly cover the translation program and some of the highlights from this year. Just share my screen real quick. This is a very basic way of just um, highlighting some numbers so that there's a, a visual representation there as well. So it's been a pretty impressive year for translations on ethereum.org with over 2,000 individual contributors translating a total of almost 3 million words. Both, are the, both of those numbers are up from last year. Um, because of all of this activity, we were able to update over 650 content buckets across all languages on the site, massively up from last year. The number of languages available on ethereum.org has also grown from 39 in last December to 51 currently live. My favorite stat though, and one that I mention often, is the ratio of non-English versus English page views. Uh, last December, non-English page views accounted for 
14.3% of all visits to the website. Since then, the number of visits in languages other than English has gone up in comparison with English page views every single month, with non-English page views currently representing a record high 27.6% of all traffic to the site. So over a quarter of all traffic to the site is now in languages other than English. In addition to these brief stats, um, We've also worked on a couple of different translation related initiatives this year. In the first quarter, we published a translation style guide, translation program playbook, cleaned up the crowding glossary. So focusing a lot on resources for translators. Later on in the year, we also completely revamped the translation program pages and resources available on the website. We also had a couple of epics focusing on translation quality, where we ran several quality analysis checks, created lists of inconsistent translations that we'll be addressing soon, and collected a bunch of feedback on the quality of translations. Recently, we've been focusing more on the translator experience, running some heart analysis and identifying concrete next steps to improving the translator experience that we're currently working through. And the final translation related initiative that I'll briefly mention was adding internationalization support to the EF blog, which is now available in 15 languages. Nico will go, will go through this in some more detail. So we can give the floor to Nico, who will walk us through some of the other EF websites that we've been involved in this year. Um, and just a quick shout out if you are interested and want to help translate Ethereum.org, um, let us know, reach out to us. We have a translation channel. DMs are also always open, always happy to chat and meet new contributors. and. <laughs> listen to feedback and ideas. So that would be it on my end. And now let's hand it over to Nico. Thanks, Luca. Hi, everyone. So I will give you all a summary of different projects uh, we have been working on, different side projects along this year. Uh, the first one is the site from the ESP team, which was the first project that I worked on since since I joined the, the team last year. Uh, basically, this project was um, an opportunity to test a new a new stack um, on on a smaller scale uh, and to validate this stack to then start applying this progressively on, on Ethereum.org, as, as Pablo mentioned, the um, chakram migration adding TypeScript was possible to because we, we, we first test this new stack on, on these smaller projects. Uh, so in the case of this site, we completely redesigned the site uh we redesigned the application forms we also integrated um the crm software that the esp team uses so this allows us to improve the application flow to scale the application funnel uh and to make the application process easier for for the applicants um the other side was this was a, a must uh, much more simple and, and small project this is the site for the cryptography research team in this case the idea was to have a site to centralize the content the members the different members of, of this team have uh, the personal sites and blogs, uh, and the idea was to have like a, a hub for this content. So, for example, now they, they have uh, 
a blog for the team and they can post uh, different posts here. So also share uh, the different uh, research projects and publications they have been working on. The same for the bounties. This was dispersed around different pages and now we have all the content on the same page. So it's easier to, to navigate. The other project was the, the blog. Uh, and as Luca mentioned, the main goal here was to provide support for internationalization. Uh, this site was also rebuilt from scratch using the, the same stack we used on, on ESP and the other sites. Um, so basically now, for example, if you, if you go to the blog site, we have this new page that wasn't available on, on the previous version, uh, where you can for example, filter post by, by language. Um, and when you enter to a post, you can navigate through the different uh, translated versions. Uh, so I think this was a, a massive improvement to the experience of, of the site. Um, mm -hmm. We have also worked on some UI and, and UX improvements. The performance has also improved a lot. Uh, and we still have some ideas in, in the roadmap for some future improvements. Uh, I, I share the a post on Discord if you want to read it more in, in detail. And the last one is more like a sneak peek because the site is not live yet. Um, but in this last queue, we have been working on, on a revamping of the get client site. Uh, in this case, we also rebuilt and redesigned the site from scratch. Uh, the documentation pages are now have, uh, I think, that a much better UI and UX. And when you start to use it, you, I think you're, you're going to notice the, the difference. Uh, the search feature, for example, I think it's quite cool. Um, and also, we have rebuilt the, um, the logic in the downloads page to improve the performance, uh, the filtering. Uh, and etc. Uh, so I think that's all I have to say. Uh, thanks all, and passing back to to you, Luca. Thank you, Nico. Yeah, a bunch of pretty cool looking websites that we've just walked through. Um, so we've all been looking behind. Um, giving you an overview of some of the main things we've been working on this year. And I guess Sam is going to wrap this up by sharing some of what we'll be focusing on next year. Sam. Thanks, Luca. Hey, everybody. Happy to be here. Yeah. What a year it was. Awesome to see the updates. I mean, over 2,000 translators involved, seeing GitHub contributors cross 1,000 people this year, I think, yeah, easily the most productive year for Ethereum.org as a project, and like major shout out to the community here for, for helping out. It's really inspiring to see and to be a part of. Um, I mean, looking ahead to 2023, hopefully you guys are are looking forward to the new year. Um, I think ultimately the story is just a lot of the same, right? Like Ethereum as, as a protocol, as a project um, in open source, as a community and ecosystem continues to evolve. And there's constant need for Ethereum.org as an educational resource to, to continue to evolve um, 
to keep up with just the community that we have. Um, as with other projects, you know, supported by the Ethereum Foundation, um, you know, a major value and like guiding philosophy we have is just the concept of subtraction. Um, if you're curious to learn more about that, encourage you to, yeah, Google that, search it on YouTube. You'll find presentations from many people within the Ethereum Foundation talking about it. And I think each project tries to exemplify that in different ways. Um, but I think the major kind of ethos of this philosophy looking into the new year is, you know, we have a core team on ethereum.org. You've heard from many of those folks today who have presented. Um, and that core team will continue to, to build out features and, and contribute to the website. But more and more, our focus is not so much like, what are we going to do as a team? It's more about like, what can the community do to solve a certain problem or to seize a certain opportunity? And like, how can we help in that effort? So if you folks are, you know, looking for ways to get involved, like that is basically our job is to like support you in terms of like what you want to build, what you want to write, what you want to design or translate. Um, and for us to help facilitate that for, for the benefit of the community. So whether that's applying for grants through the Ethereum Foundation, whether that's working with us just to like, you know, build up a resume or learn new skills, definitely encourage you to get involved. Um, in terms of like a couple teasers, just to give a sense of where we're looking for like the next few months of the coming year, I can say two big focuses are um, one is just withdrawals for for stakers so if you've been following the ethereum protocol much um you've probably seen a lot of chatter how planned into this next upcoming shanghai upgrade um will be facilitating withdrawals for for stakers um our team helps maintain launchpad.ethereum.org and that's kind of like a go-to resource to to get up and running as as a solo staker. Um, so we'll be working on building educational resources on ethereum.org to explaining how do withdrawals work from a technical standpoint, um, ways to learn about just like considerations to take in mind, continuing to build out documentation for stakers to help them, you know, to stake successfully at the end of the day. Um, and latest indications are, you know, that might be as soon as, you know, March, um, April this coming year. So building out functionality and resources around withdrawals, um, is going to be a huge focus for our team, which is super exciting. I think the second one that, you know, you heard Nuno and Pablo and maybe even others touch upon, but just like implementing the design system we've been working on for the past six months, actually rolling that out into code. Um, we think this is going to be a huge unlock in terms of just like improving accessibility of the website, making it just easier to design and build new pages and new features. So like that any developer, any designer can come into the project and have like the building blocks they need to to be productive and be successful um and i think a cool part of that which others also mentioned but like rolling out storybook which is a really nice kind of developer sandbox if you will for us to you know build components in isolation test them in this isolated sandbox take image snapshots to make sure there's no bugs or regressions or accessibility pitfalls um, should really help us kind of just improve productivity across the code base um, for really any contributor looking to help out. Um, and I guess last one to just say is, yeah, like translation improvements is always an area we're looking at. As Luca mentioned, you know, over 2,000 people um, contributed to translations on the project this year. Like we're thinking about you guys and how we can make your job easier and just more efficient. 
um, whether that's like QA tools, building out our glossary and translation memory, um, empowering you folks with tools to just be more productive and enjoy doing it more, um, you know, exploring machine translations to, to help you be more productive. Um, super excited about potential stuff in the pipeline there. Um, and I guess I just end is like, you know, like what else we work on as a team and as a community, like very much up to you. So let us know whether it's in Discord, calls like these, GitHub, Twitter. Let us know what you think we should work on um, and let us know what you want to work on. And we'll do our best to try to empower you um, to, to get out there and, and make a difference. So thanks a lot. And yeah, looking forward to, to seeing you all in, in 2023. Thank you, Sam. With that, we are basically through with all of the things we wanted to chat about. Um, I'm going to give it over to Josh. Hello, my um, it's time I get to be the hero and come in with the, the POA if I'm sharing my screen. Um, we do have a couple of other things that Luca's about to go through. So I just thought that I'd start this just now and we can leave it up for the rest of the call while we chat. Um, yeah, so sharing my screen just now, if you get some sort of QR scanner, you can scan the POAP code and that will allow you to claim your POAP with an address or your ENS. Um, and I guess lastly, just while we're giving shouts, I um, want to give a shout out to Scott One Up, who I did see on this call. I'm not sure if he's still here. Um, but he has helped us a lot with creating POAPs across the year. Um, all of the ones for the community calls, but also a bunch of others that I'm sure a lot of you have already claimed. Um, yeah, so shout out to Scott. Uh, and I'll I'll pass it back over to Luca just to finish this up while you claim your POAPs. Thank you, Josh. All right, so moving on to the very, very final part, we have a couple of announcements and miscellaneous things we'd like to mention. Um, first of all, events. So the Ethereum.org team has attended a couple this year where we've been learning, attending talks, meeting new people, meeting up with our contributors. We ran a booth. We also gave a couple of talks. Um, I'm going to be sharing the links to Sam's and my talks at DEF CON in Bogota in the chat right now, with Sam talking about education as a public good and the history of Ethereum.org. While my topic was growing the global Ethereum community through localization, feel free to check them out if you're interested. And with that being said, I'm sure other people on the team would like to share a word or two about in real life events and the value of attending them. So let's open up the floor and hear from some of them as well. Joshua nominates Corwin. Corwin, you wanna? Chime sure. in. Um, yeah, some of the like, highlights that have come from attending these events um, comes from one, meeting the community members. It was really awesome at DevCon to have that booth and have a space for people to come up and meet us in person and to talk about all the work we're doing um, on Ethereum.org as a community. Other highlights that have come from being able to go to these events is connecting with people who are able to help us build out these resources and are more um, and are experts in the domain that we're trying to build out content for. So an example that comes to mind uh, would be like the Bridges page we talked about. We met um, the guys that work at LiFi at a conference and they helped contribute to our website or the Layer 2 website. We met a bunch of L2 companies in uh, East Denver who helped us like verify the information we were putting out and make sure we were making a good resource for everyone to look at. So like a lot of the value comes from being able to meet people who are either experts in the domain or interested in uh, this project as a whole and just like really awesome to meet the community members through all of this. 
Yeah, exactly. A lot of different benefits. Also, I would say as um, really applicable to anyone who wants to get more involved in Ethereum, in the space, in the community in general, is to go to an in real life event or two. It's a great opportunity to learn and to connect with people and to share ideas and to pick up ideas. Um, so yeah, that's that's one uh, thing we wanted to call out. Also, Eportos happening next year, seeing Nuno just mentioning that. So a new event, if you want to check that out, if you like sunny weather, Probably good place to be. Um, <laughs> if I may, just quick, I just want to chime in too uh, and second all of the things that Ian said. When it comes to these IRL experiences, like any any event that folks can go to if they're trying to get more involved, I would argue would be valuable and beneficial. They don't have to be the biggest events out there. Like ETH Den, or, yeah, ETH Den was coming up in a couple months. That's a very large event. Hopefully, we'll see some folks there, and I encourage folks to to apply if you can make it. But if you can't make it to something like that, or any type of larger conference, definitely consider meetups as well. Look in your local community, try to find other folks who are also you know, spreading with Ethereum, playing around, building things, try to see what they're working on. Any folks that you can get in touch with locally can really help kind of harvest your, your knowledge and education and, and access in the space. So just want to put that out there as well. And hopefully we'll see some folks at some different events this year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Moving on. Um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, one last thing that, that no one, I don't think I heard anyone really touch on. Um, but yeah, if you want to get involved and you don't work in this space, but you want to go to one of these events, one of the best ways to do that is to offer your time uh, and volunteer. Almost all of the time, that means that you'll get tickets to the event for free in exchange for you helping out with the event. Um, but I've had loads of conversations with a lot of great people who are who volunteer at these events and just by being there and volunteering you get to have amazing conversations with a lot of really interesting people um, and there's also the added benefit that if you're interested you can spend a bit of your time going to the talks which i would highly recommend as well so if there's something near you that you want to go to or even not um, check out in advance look at the events coming up and see if you can get on the list as a volunteer Yeah, exactly. 2023 is coming up. There's going to be a bunch of events going on. If you can, if, and if you have time, attending at least one is usually um, a rewarding and beneficial experience. But given that we're already on time, I want to quickly run through two other miscellaneous announcements. Um, first of all, we published a survey for translators a couple of days ago so we can collect some feedback and evaluate how translators feel about contributing and the translation process and hopefully use these takeaways to improve certain aspects of the contributor experience. Um, I am sharing a link to the survey in the chat. Um, please note that this channel and message are only accessible to server members with the translator role since we want to make sure that only translators are filling out this survey but if you are a translator and haven't filled this out yet please do please share your thoughts and feedback it means a lot to us and the more we can learn about how contributors feel the more we can work on improving their experience and finally you might have noticed that we've just announced an nft for active community members and contributors sharing uh, the message link with all the details and instructions for claiming the nft in the chat as well basically this is just a simple way of us saying thank you to our most active and engaged community members and maybe also the start of us doing more things like this so in short, this is a regular NFT on optimism that you can claim if you have any of the following roles on the theorem.org discord. So you can find the exact roles in this message. Uh, the mint is free. You do need to pay a gas fee to mint, which is usually around 10 cents on optimism. 
In case you don't have funds on Optimism, this seems like a good time to bridge some over and start exploring Ethereum's Layer 2 ecosystem, which is growing rapidly and it has exploded with activity this year. And if you're not eligible to claim this NFT at the moment, don't have one of the roles, don't worry, there will be more opportunities in the future. I would say just try to contribute to the website in some way, be active in our community, collect a role if possible, and you're good. As always, a huge thanks to everyone on this call, as well as all other members of the Ethereum.org community. We've come a long way to the point where we now have a vibrant community and thousands of contributors to the website. So all of these great stats and metrics that we've shared here today are very much the result of all of these contributions and your efforts. So thank you. Have a nice break, everyone, and hopefully see you all again soon.